today's training is going to be about Facebook lead ads. So we're going to go over, I'm going to just review some old versus new tactics, some of the costs involved. Um, we're going to talk about what a lead ad is. I'm going to go over the pros and cons of a lead ad. We'll talk about a little bit of strategy, and then I'll jump right into Facebook and show you how to set it up. And then at the end, uh, we'll do a Q&A. So if you have any questions, you can type in them, them in the chat box. If I don't get to, to them during the training, I usually answer all the questions at the end. So the way my trainings usually work, it's about, four, about 30 to 45 minutes um, over the shoulder training. So I do have some backup slides just in case because this is technology, things can go wrong and they have in the past and that's never fun, but I try to prep it so we, we should be good to go. Um, the best way to watch these trainings is to you know watch this. Again, it's only been about 30 minutes. Watch this, then you'll get a replay and then you can really follow along and kind of do it step by step. So you know, unplug from all distractions, just give me about 30, 40 minutes um, and you'll learn a ton. So a little bit about myself, I own a company called Hey Remodelers, and we work exclusively with kitchen and bath remodelers and countertop companies across the U.S. So, um, you know, I've been doing marketing for over 10 years, worked for some big ad agencies. You know, they were okay, but I wasn't super happy with the work they were doing. Um, so I kind of branched out on my own. And then after running for a couple of years, um, I decided I just wanted to work with countertop companies and kitchen and bathroom modelers. I do have a little bit of a background in it. My my father was, um, you know, did four mica countertops. He did kitchens too. Uh, my grandfather, my uncle. So I, it's kind of in the family. Um, I went more of the tech route where, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a computer geek, but, you know, I, I really love what I do. So, you know, I have two kids at home right now. I Our whole business works remotely. Um, uh, my, my son is Mason and my daughter's Lola and my wife's Lisa. You could probably hear them in the background at some point, but that's just, uh, what's, what's going on now with, with most people from home. So let's get into some of the old tactic costs. Now, you know, these are kind of just basic numbers. This is from back when I worked at a big ad agency. This, this was kind of their pricing, but for a local TV ad, you could expect to pay about $5,000 per 1 million viewers. Um, a local radio ad, 3,000 per 1 million listeners, and then a regional newspaper, about six, 700 bucks, and it could be up to tens of thousands of dollars for an ad in their paper. Now, if you look at some of the new tactic costs, um, Google ads in the countertop and kitchen remodeling space, it's usually around 500 to $1,500 a month for an ad spend. Facebook ads are usually around Three to six hundred could be like three to a thousand, um, and then if you were going to do an SEO campaign <clears throat> with a marketing company, that's usually around fifteen hundred bucks. Now these are just kind of general numbers, uh, but you could see the difference in in marketing costs from old tactics compared to new tactics. Now I'm not saying the old tactics do do not work. You know, the, some of these can definitely work, but what I like with the new tactics, I mean, this is really all that I do. Um, I, I like that you could really track everything. I mean, you can track the click, the call, how some long someone's on your website, you could track everything. So that's really the bigger difference. So you really know where every dollar is going. So let's talk about lead ads. So hold on right here. All right, so lead ads is an ad that a user, you know, they're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, they see an ad, and the user actually clicks on the ad, and it pops open a little form. They never have to go to your website, and most of the information will be pre-populated. So it's a, a really, you know, it's a it's a, a low friction ad where, again, they don't need to go to your website. They don't need to leave the social media platform that they on. They could that they're on. They can simply just click it and submit their information. Now, there's good and bad things about this. The good is, you know, it's very easy for someone to submit their info. You know, that is good. But the problem is it could lead to a lot of unqualified leads. So if it's too easy for someone to convert into a potential customer, you know, a lead, sometimes the quality goes down 
because a lot of times I don't understand this, but a lot of times, you know, I have clients that say, oh, you know, this person, well, we do our, our lead ads a little bit different and I'll get into that in a second. But if we, if we do a lead ad with just like name, phone number, email address, it's so easy to, to submit. People actually forget that they submitted it and just never even realize that they, they submitted it. So I'll, I'll talk about some things on how to prevent that. But, you know, that is a problem that I see. Now, um, the other problem is Facebook. They don't really make it that easy to get the lead information. You have to log into Facebook. You have to download an Excel spreadsheet. Um, right now, I do think they're rolling out an email feature. So you get a lead and then you get emailed that you got a lead, which is good. They never used to have that. One of my clients gets that, but my other client doesn't. So I think it's something that they're testing. Facebook will usually test something like this and then they'll roll it out, you know, to different parts of the country, different parts of the world. So that's good that they're doing that, but it's, it's still not super easy to get the lead information. What we do with our clients, we hook them up to a piece of software called Zapier. So they, someone submits the lead in Facebook and then Zapier actually sends them an email and a text, which makes it a lot easier. And it's all basically instantly. Um, and then the other thing is they work really well just when set up correctly. You know, if they're, if they're not set up correctly, they can, you can kind of just burn through money. So let's go to the next slide right here. So the strategy that we're going to talk about is, you know, promoting your business on Facebook and Instagram with a lead ad. The, the budget should be around, I have clients that do it for $5 a day. Some do 10, some do 15, some do even more like $50 a day but you could do it with between five and $20 a day. You know, I would probably start at five to 10 bucks a day. Then as you're seeing leads come in, slowly increase it. Don't make any big adjustments in Facebook. It usually doesn't go well. Like if you're have a campaign running at five bucks a day and you're like, oh, I'm getting leads. I'm going to crank it up to 20 bucks a day. I don't know exactly why, but you're not, it's not going to perform like you think it would. You would just think, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, tripling my budget, it's going to work that much better. It usually does not work like that. So what I recommend, if you're at a $5 a day budget and you want to get to say $15 a day, you know, one week, raise it a dollar, then raise it $2, you know, just raise it in small uh, increments like that up to the 15 to $20 a day. Uh, we'll also, I'll show you, you can't anymore target homeowners and Facebook, unfortunately, but I'll show you some ways, some targetings that uh, that we use, some targeting options that we use that work well for our clients. And again, when I, I say Facebook, you you advertise in Facebook for Facebook and Instagram. Since Facebook owns Instagram, you do all your setup and you know all the adjustments inside of Facebook Ads Manager. Now, here's a quick little screenshot of this is a campaign that we ran. It's still running. This is a little bit older of a screenshot, but it's from May, 19 days in May. And you can see down here, we were running a traffic campaign, but we were also running a lead ad campaign. And you can see five leads right here, 36 bucks per lead. So it's pretty good. You know, lead cost is usually around, we've had them down to under $10 a lead, but say about $10. Sometimes they could go as high as like $50 per lead, which, you know, when I show you how to set it up, it's, it will be a qualified lead because it's not going to be very easy for them to submit the information. So these are pretty good leads, you know, for 10 to $50 per lead, that's actually a good cost. You know, I would pay that all day long um, for, for leads. Now you need a Facebook ads account for this. You need a Facebook page for your business. Of course, you can't run this from a personal account. Um, I'm not going to go over these steps, but basically what you want to do is, you know, set up your business page, <clears throat> then go to facebook.com backslash business backslash ads and set up an ads account. You will have to enter in your billing information. You, know, you can't run anything without your billing information. You, Facebook wants to get paid. So, you know, set this up. It's very easy to do. It's, you know, Facebook basically takes you through the steps. Then after you do that, you do everything in Facebook ads manager. So, so you can go to facebook.com backslash ads backslash manager. 
So let's jump in and let's jump in and let's go over some of this. Now, if you're just joining, I know some people are coming in a little bit later. Um, I'm going to just give you a quick rundown. I'm not going to run through everything because I am going to send out the replay. But basically what we're going to do here, you know, I explained some of the old versus new tactics, a lead ad. I'm, I explained what a lead ad is. It's a, it's a simple ad that you go to Facebook, you fill out your information, and it's all inside Facebook. I talked about some of the pros and cons, and I talked about the strategy. Again, you'll get the replay, so you'll get all of that. But right now, we're going to jump into the setup, and I'm going to show you how to set this up. So let me pull up Facebook here. All right. So now a quick question. Has has anyone, you know, has anyone run a Facebook ad in the past for their business? You could just type it into the chat box. I'm just curious if you've if you tried these ads. Just while I get this set up here. All right, I'm seeing a lot of no's. That's okay. I'm going to show you how to set this up. All right, so this is Facebook Ads Manager. I've done some trainings in the past. Let me just take a quick sip of water. I've done some trainings in the past where I've showed you how to set up traffic ads, video ads, engagement ads, all of that. They they all work. You just have to test them. Um you know, a lot of people think you could set up an ad, test it for like 100 bucks if it doesn't work, then after $100, it's not going to work. And that's that's not the case. You got to spend a little bit of money to see if it works. You know, um, you can't expect it to just run straight out of the gate and just work perfectly. It, it's not going to work like that. So Facebook lead ad, when you go to Facebook, you click on create. Now, the problem with doing this live is the sometimes it's a little slow so i apologize but there's really nothing i can do about that so you see all different objectives here um like i said i've done some traffic ad camp um training in the past we did some video ad training so this is lead generation so if you go here collect leads for your business or brand so you go click click on this click on continue So the objective again is just what you want to get out of the campaign. So you know you want to um, get leads for your business. I mean, all these campaigns you want to get leads for your business, but you want to get leads on Facebook for your business. So now that is the that's the campaign level lead generation. Um, you know that's all you have to set there. You don't have to do anything else. I wouldn't do this A/B testing. I wouldn't do the camp campaign budget optimization. So make sure all that stuff's off. Um, it's really all you have to do here. And then you just name it. So you might name it, you know, lead, whoops, lead ad campaign, or you can name it whatever you want. This is only internally for you. Now, next is the ad set and then the ad. I'm actually going to jump into different screens because I have that set up already. But the ad set is where you set your targeting. You set your area, you set your targeting, you set your budget there then the ad level is where you create the ad. So let's jump into the ad set level. So here you go. So this is the ad set level. Again, looks the same. So this was my campaign. I, I did this before just in case there's any hangups. Um, I like to have this done in advance. But right here you can see lead ad. That's my campaign name. HR training. That's my ad set level. Ad one is my actual ad. So let's talk about the ad set level, which is the targeting. Now, the beauty of Facebook is they're targeting. They know a lot of information about you. So you really want to dial into that. Now, right at the top, you can name it whatever you want. Again, I have mine HR training. You can, you know, lead ad um, Austin, if that's where you live or wherever it is. Just name it whatever you want in this box right here. Then you're going to set your budget. I just have a dollar a day. I mean, you can try it for a dollar a day. I don't recommend that. Lead ads, you should really start at five bucks a day. But, you know, depending on your budget, start five to $10. And if you want to get to like $20, just do say $5 and then every week increase it to about $2 till you hit that $20 mark. 
don't right out of the gate just do 20 bucks because or or don't start at five dollars and then say the next week bump it up to twenty dollars bump it up slowly i don't know why facebook doesn't perform as good as if you just bump it up real quick but that's just the way it works just from with all the campaigns that we've tested so you're going to set your budget here you can set an end date i keep it open because i'm always in here kind of checking it now as you scroll down here this is where the targeting happens so the audience now you can see on the right side of the screen it's giving me the audience uh you know the potential reach right here so let me just break this down a little bit for you so the first thing you want to pick is your location so right here i'm not in austin texas we actually used to live there now we live in connecticut but you would put your location here most of the time i like to put um a city so let's just say uh tampa florida city and then it's going to put a big circle around it come on put a big circle around it here as the you know the radius of your location you know adjust it to whatever your service area is most of our clients um, countertop clients, kitchen and bathroom modelers, they service about 30 miles or so. Some will service 60 plus, uh, but I'd say the majority are like 20, 30 miles. So just, you know, adjust it to whatever, whatever you want here. Now, another tip is by default, Facebook's going to do people living in or recently in this location. You know, personally, I don't care if someone went, if, if my area is Austin, Texas, you know, I don't care if someone went on vacation there. I don't want to target them because then when they're back in, you know, San Diego, they're not going to have any interest in my kitchen remodel business in Austin, Texas. So what you want to pick here is people living in this location. So make sure you want to select that. That's an extra little tip. So then you scroll down. You got age. Now, you could test this out. What we find, usually about 30 to 65 is a good age range um, for ads. You know, too young, they aren't quite ready to invest in, you know, a countertop. Uh, and, of course, there are some people that are. But if you, if you have a limited budget, you want to have some good targeting and you really want to, um, you know, tighten this up as much as you can. So, 30 to 65 plus works good. Um, you can even do 30 to 55, 30 to 60. That's all good. I'm going to actually take this location out. All right, so I took it out there. And you can see as I adjust things, this number goes up and down. So a good audience size, it's going to depend on your location, but a good audience size is 50,000, I'd say to about 200,000, too big and your audience is just way too broad, too small, and you're not going to show the ad to enough people. So this potential reach is basically just how many people are in the audience, all these interests that you're setting up that are going to see, that could potentially see your ad. Now, the next one is detailed targeting. Now, this, again, there used to be a homeowner interest in here, which was fantastic. They got rid of that. So what works good is, you know, I recommend opening it pretty wide up. So someone that, you know, likes countertops, someone that likes granite, marble, quartz, um, you know, which is, which is pretty broad. You could also, what you could do is narrow it down. So you can narrow it down here and then you can put, um, we've done this before. We do this for some of our clients. Let me look for it real quick. So you could go to demographics, education, education level, college graduate, doctorate, and you would select these. Now, again, you know, this is kind of a general statement, but saying people that have some interest in countertops, granite, marble quartz, and they're college educated, um, put them in this audience. And for some of, the, of our clients, we do this. For some, we don't put in this education level. What we found in the past, or with our testing, I should say, is sometimes when you put this education level in, you'll get a little bit higher end of a client. And again, this is just a general statement. Um, 
this isn't a hundred percent going to work in your area. So just test. You know, I recommend open it up. Just do uh, just do the countertops, or you know, if you're not doing countertops and you're doing kitchen remodels, let me get rid of this here. You can do. Let me see the interest here. Uh, it's not showing up. What you could do here also, what we've done, like you add in Home Depot. You add in Lowe's. You add in some of those. Um, I think renovating's one of them. Let's see here. Now Home Depot's probably going to open up that audience. 270,000 people. So you could see how it... You know, but as you put more interest in here, it makes it bigger. Um, renovation. You can also look for like some of the um, or home improvement. This is a good one too. Like the home renovation shows. You can see what people are interested in those. You know, not that they're ready to redo their kitchen right now, but if they're watching that type of stuff, um, they might be eventually interested in this. So. Just gives you some ideas. Again, if you're doing countertops, try the countertop options. Even if you're just doing kitchen and bathroom models, you can still do these countertop options. You know, um, it's, it's again, we don't know exactly what Facebook is saying. If someone, you know, typed in countertop once in the search browser in Facebook or if they liked something with a countertop, there's, you know, we don't know exactly what they did in this instance, but, um you know, it's good to test different things. And these are just some different ideas for you. Now, this audience, you can see it's a little bit too big, 410,000. It's a little big for me. Um, I would probably get rid of a couple of these. Try to get it down to 100, 200,000. So that's the targeting. As I scroll down here, you don't have to worry about any of this stuff. You could do automatic placements. I like to do manual placements. And I like to tell fa uh, Facebook to display it on Facebook, display it on Instagram. And with a smaller budget, 5 to 20 bucks a day, you know, run it on the Facebook news feed, run it on the Instagram news feed. You could try the stories too, uh, Facebook and Instagram stories, but you could just stick to the news feeds. As I scroll down a little bit more, you know, so deselect anything else, get rid of all this other stuff. And then this, you could just, you know, keep as is. So that's the targeting. Let's jump back up to the ad. All right, so here you go. So when you get into the ad creation, again, this is the campaign level. This is our objective. This is our ad set level. This is the targeting. And then right here is where you create your ad. So you would click in here. It's going to bring you to the screen. Now, again, you could try different stuff. You could pop in a video here. But to keep it simple, you might want to just start off, you know, pop in an image. Uh, don't use a stock photo. Use something that you have. Um, even if you have to go out, take a picture of a, a countertop or a kitchen remodel, um, you know, use one of your own pictures. Those usually work the best. Usually the pictures that look good, but they don't look so good that like, they look like a stock image usually work the best. People were kind of blind to ads now. So like something that is really polished, you know, or a video that looks like a commercial, something like that. We just scroll right by because we know it's an ad. But something that looks a little bit more raw, we're more open to, you know, we, we're just, we're open to seeing it. You know, we're, we're, it's not like we've seen it a million times because we've seen, seen a million commercials. We've seen a million pictures of kitchens that are like these professional photos. So get out your iPhone, take a couple of pictures of projects, you want it to look good. You don't want it to look blurry and and all kind of distorted, but you know it can look a little raw. So just keep that in mind. So you pop in a picture here, um, you know whatever you have. I suggest you make it a square picture because it's going to take up more room when someone's on their phone. So they're scrolling, and I say phone because most people are on Facebook or Instagram on their phone. So they're scrolling down, and and a square picture is actually going to take up more landscape. So your ad's just going to be bigger to them. So always try to make it a square image. In Facebook, you can actually, um, you know, I'll show you right here. After you edit, after you enter the image, you can crop it, pop this open, 
and you can pick square here and then kind of, you know, set the picture where you want. So even if it is a rectangular picture, you can crop it inside of Facebook so it's a, a square image. <coughs> All right, so we got our picture in. Again, you can name this whatever you want, add one, name it, lead add one, whatever it is. And then you, you got to put some text in here. So you got to put some text down here for a headline. Even if you're not running a sale or, or something like that, you know, you don't want to... You, you don't want to put in false information, but you do want to put in something that's going to stop someone. So if you're not having a sale, you know, you don't have to put that in there. Um, but you could, you know, put something that's going to help someone to stop and be like, oh, I'm interested in this. It could just say, you know, um, you know, I have fall countertop sale here, but it could just be, you know, um, brighten up your your kitchen this fall, something like that. I don't know, something along the lines of that. And then in the in the text above the ad, you could try this right here. So you could do, you know, if, if you're in Austin, if you're in Tampa, wherever you are, it doesn't matter. You can kind of call out who you want to see the ad. So Austin homeowners could be Tampa homeowners, um, Seattle homeowners, whatever it is. If you're looking for a countertop for your project, then contact us today, a little emoji, fill out the form or give us a call. Now there's a couple things here. I include an emoji just because it, it stands out when someone's scrolling by, they see the emoji. Um, the other thing, plus it makes it look a little bit less professional. Um, that's what the emoji does. Now, the other thing is I'm telling them what to do, fill out the form or give us a call. You'll be surprised a lot of people call just when you list the phone number here. So, you know, you could, you could just put your phone number in. The right way to do it is set up a tracking number so you know who's calling, but just get your phone number in there so they have the options. Now, <coughs> for the button here, you can select contact us. I think there's a contact us. Uh, there is an, another type of ad, but you could do, you know, learn more, get quote, get, get quote, works good. So that's what I recommend. I mean, essentially, that's what they, they're, they're wanting to get. Um, so that's the ad. You got your, your your picture here, your text at the top, your headline down at the bottom, get a quote, call to action. And then here is the lead form. So you're going to create one. I'm just going to duplicate this one so we can look at it. So I'm going to click here. <coughs> All right. So, so this is the lead ad, and this is what it's actually going to like look like when it's on someone's phone. So the first thing is the title, just name it, whatever, it doesn't matter. Next thing is more volume or higher intense. Now, click on more volume. You, I usually wouldn't say to do this, but I'm going to give you an extra step that will help the ad show to a more qualified person. So click on more volume, click on intro. You can use the image from your ad or you could just upload one. Not a big deal there. Then you want to type in some text. Usually I'll type in the same headline. So fall countertop sale, um, redo your kitchen this fall, you know, um, something along the lines of that. Then right underneath a little blurb of text. I usually make it a little bit different than the description in the ad. So right here we have hundreds of slabs to pick from, blah, 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 five to day, seven, five to seven day turnaround. So you, you always want to put something, you know, positive something to an advantage of your company so you know quick turnaround um you know lots of colors to choose from for a kitchen remodel um you know increase your home value something along the lines of that so that's that that's going to show right here now this is the big tip that you want to do you don't want to miss this tip right here <clears throat> sorry i keep coughing so what you want to do is add a custom question. And the reason you want to do this, because this will make it a little bit harder for someone to fill out this form. Now you want it to be easy, but you don't want it to be that easy. You want it to be kind of somewhere in between. You want it to be easy. You don't want it to be too hard. You want it right in the middle. So click, click on short answer. It's going to pop open this right here and then type something in here. So we have what project is this for? So, you know, um, anything, you know, or uh, this works good too. Let me do this. Tell 
Oops. Tell us about your project. It's going to take a second. There you go. Tell us about your project. Now, the person cannot move forward until they enter something in here. So they have to visit. It's not a click. It's not like a multiple choice. It's not easy. They have to enter something in here. So I'm telling you, you, you need to do this or these leads aren't going to be, you know, quality. You want quality over quantity because I've seen it happen time and time again. So put something in there. You know, you could get creative with your, your questions, but this works good for either a countertop company or a kitchen and bathroom modeler. Tell us about your project is perfect. They might say, I need a countertop cut by this dimension, by this dimension. They might say, you know, I'm looking to redo my kitchen, you know, over the next few months, whatever it is. So it's perfect. Now that's the first screen. Now the next screen are these questions right here. Email and full name should be automatically, um, you know, sh will automatically show right here. But I recommend adding phone number. So just go to contact field phone number. I'm just gonna add street address just so you can see what it's like. It just adds it right here. I'm gonna get rid of that. You can actually, we do have a client that adds in city. So you can add that in, but you can see here when someone lands on this, this form, they see this first, they have to enter in an answer. Then the next screen, then this is the information that will be pre-populated. Facebook has your email, they have your name, most likely they have your phone number, and then most likely they have your city. So this will all be pre-populated. Now you could see if I didn't add this question in and I just clicked here, this was all pre-populated, I click next, it'd be very easy to enter my information, which is nice, but the quality will go down if you just do that. So add in a couple fields here, information that you need, email, name, phone number, city, usually work good. The next screen is your privacy policy. You need a privacy policy, so go to your website, get the link to your privacy policy, put it in here. You could try to run this without doing this. You could just put in your website and enter privacy policy. I've done that in the past. It's not a good idea though. Get a privacy policy. Um, it's best to get a lawyer to do one, but you can find one online. Usually you can find a template online either, either for free or you could pay like, I don't even know how much, not, not that much money, but definitely get the privacy policy on your website. And then is the final screen that they will see. And this is after their information is submitted. So usually something I'll put here, you know, thanks, your information is submitted. Thanks, you're all set, I think is the default text. We'll get back to you shortly. Give us a call or visit our website today. You'll be surprised. You'll get a lot of calls from this. Plus you'll get people going to your website and then also filling out information on your website. One of our clients in a certain area, countertop client, that happens all the time. I have no idea why, but people submit their information then they continue on to their website and then they submit information again. So, hey, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, you want as many leads, qualified leads as possible. You know, if someone really wants to get in contact with you, you know, give them that option. What else you could do here, I've done this for a client, um, call business. And then you put your phone number in here and then they can just click and call you. So that's a good option too. Then you would click publish and that i'm going to get rid of this here and then that form will be right here and that's really all you have to do let me just scroll down real quick i'm not going to talk about the facebook pixel here but you should have that set up and then once you're done you just click on publish this green button and it's going to publish your ad and usually within about could be a couple hours, but it could be 24 hours, could even be 48 hours. Your ad will be published live, and then you can go, um, and then your ad will start showing to people. So that is that. And now when you're in Facebook, a couple of tips here. You know, you jump into Facebook here. This button right here, you could see a little toggle button. This means my ad's off. So if you jump in here, you know, you want to make sure this is on. Um, you want to make sure on this screen that it's on. 
you know, it should be right after you do this ad, but if your your ad is, you know, you're not seeing anything, you're wondering what's going on, jump in here, make sure everything's on because you, you know, you don't want to set this up and the ad's not even on and it's not running. So that is it. So the next thing here, let me see what I got going on here. All right, so you know you can do this yourself. I just showed you how to. We can do this for you if you're interested. Um, the best next step, if you are interested in someone working, you know, on this for you, book a strategy session. All you got to do is go to our website. <clears throat> go to our website. You'll see a million buttons to book a strategy session. Click on one of them. Um, pick a time that works for you. You know, we got a bunch of times on here. They're about thirty minutes long. We'll review, you know, your website. We'll review a strategy for you. You'll learn a ton on the call. You know, book the call, even if you're you're not sure. Book the call. You know, every company isn't a good fit for us, so we'll let you know that. Um, but book the call. You know, you'll get a good a lot of good information. We'll give you some tips on your website. You really have nothing to lose. Um, and you can see right here, just to give you a little example, like from one of our clients. This was in May again. Um, their Google ads campaign, I mean, from the 13th to the 15th, they had, you know, one, two, three, four, five, a bunch of, a bunch of leads. So, you know, we do Google ads, Facebook ads, SEO, we do it all. Um, and we only work with countertop and kitchen and bathroom modelers. So we know your industry. We have proven campaigns that work. Um, you know, we're really, you know, we're pretty good at what we do. So definitely book the call. If you're unsure, you'll at least learn some good information on there. Um, and that's it. So let me know if you have any questions. I see a couple. I'm just going to take a quick sip of water here. All right. So the first question I see is asking about budget, which I think I had in one of these slides here. It's asking, what do you recommend a good budget? So I did... Did talk about that. Where was it? Okay, so right here. So a good budget to start with is, you know, I recommend if, if you're new to this, start with five bucks a day. You know, run it for five bucks a day. If you can do it for 10, you know, do it for 10. But start five to 10 and, and let it run for at least a couple of weeks. I like 30 days. It's always a good number. Get 30 days worth of data, see what happens. Don't jump in and start touching your ad after like two days. Just don't do it. People always do that. You have to be patient with this stuff. It's not going to work just from day one. It could, you know, a lot of times it, it will if it's set up correctly, but you got to let it run. You got to let it run for 30 days. Now, five to $10 a day, that's 150 bucks to $300 a month. You know, it's not, it, it's something, but in the terms of ad spend, it really isn't that much, you know, 20, 50, a hundred dollars a day. Those are bigger budgets where, um, that are usually spent with Facebook ads, you know, five to 10 bucks a day really isn't that much, but it's a good starting point. It's somewhere where you can start and then you can grow from there. Now, if you want to eventually get to 20 bucks a day, I mentioned this a couple of times, start at five to 10 bucks a day each week, increase it like $2, you know, if you see it, if you see leads coming in, don't get excited and just quickly increase that budget because the campaign isn't going to perform like you think it would. Again, there's no, I have no like explanation about this, but usually when you increase your budget quickly in Facebook and even Google ads, it doesn't perform like you think it would. It's, you know, it's better just to increase it slowly. Could have something to do with the algorithm and their computers and, you know, all things on their side, but the slow increments of an increased budget usually perform better. I see another question. Do you recommend? So this is a good question. So they're asking, you know, if you have a limited budget, will you recommend running, you know, traffic ad, video ad, or a lead ad? So it, it's, a, it's a good question. It's a tough one to answer because really, like I said, 
We run countertop campaigns. We run kitchen remodel campaigns all over the U.S. You would think they would they would perform exactly the same in location A to location B, but that's not the case. It's just different people are in different locations, and they they just react differently to all types of advertising. So what I recommend is start with start with you know one. I'd start with the lead ad because the lead ad I think works pretty good. Start with the lead ad, do five to 10 bucks a day, let it run for one to two months. Give it a good run. Don't just let it run for a week. I see that problem often. People let it run for two days. They say it's not working and then they turn it off or they change things or whatever. Let it run for 30 to 60 days. Then after that, if you're like, eh, it ran for 60 days, I got one lead or I didn't get any leads, you know, move on to another ad and test that for 60 days. You know, don't just jump around to all ads, you know, one a week or whatever it is, um, unless you have the budget to do so. If you wanted to test a lead ad campaign, throw five to 10 bucks a day at it. You can do a traffic campaign for the same amount. You can do a video campaign for the same amount. I'm not seeing any other questions. So I will have a recording of this. So I'll send that out once it's done processing. Again, you know, book a strategy session. We'll we'll really dive into your business. I'll let you know, you know, what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. I'll show you exact examples of what we do for our clients. Um, we'll see if you're a good fit. If not, you will learn information. I love to teach. I do these trainings all the time. I'm constantly posting stuff on, on social media about tips and tricks and all that stuff. I really like to teach. So on these strategy sessions, it's, it's more for you. You know, you're going to learn a ton and I'm going to point you in the right direction. And again, if you're a good fit, then we can talk about that. And if not, that's okay. I'm all right. I, I can't work with every company out there. It's, it's physically impossible. Um, but you know, you got nothing to lose. So definitely jump on my website, book one of those. And that's about it. I will send this out um, by either later today or tomorrow. And if you have any questions at all, email me, steve at hayremodelers.com. Jump on my social media, private message me, whatever it is. I'm, I'm always here to help out.